Hello guys, welcome to Structural Geology course. And today I'm going to introduce you um, what are scales and then the tools that are used by the structural geologist and why the structural geology is um, very important. So a structural geology is the study of three-dimensional distribution of rocks and their deformation over time. So in other ways, we can say um, the structural geology is the field-based discipline which operates um, from you know, grain to rocks, that is to say from micro scale to mega um to make a scopic, right? It and it involves the analysis of the relationship between rocks, their structures, and the processes that shapes them. Structural geologists use a variety of techniques, including field observation. You have to go to the field, um, and and uh, and see these folds, of, uh, fold, and many other um, um structures that can be seen in the field, and you know, laboratory analysis, um, and 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 computer simulations. So why um, these tools have been used to understand complex interaction between rocks and their environment. And so scales, um, structural geology operates at a range of scales um, from microscopic to um, what do you call um, a macroscopic. You know, with microscopic, we know that's um, what cannot, what a, a naked eye cannot see. And then you have to um, usually use what you call the microscope to just see the, the texture of the minerals, you know, and what kind of minerals are there within a specific kind of a rock. And, you know, and then when we talk about the me me mesoscale, we'll, you'll be able to see uh, the uh, foliations, lineations, and um, what we call the um, the uh, it's the lineation foliations and um, what you call the um, planes, right? What you call the, the the planes can all be they can all be seen. But I'm gonna show you what we are we really talking about, all right? And so at the um at the macroscopic scale, structural geology study the arrangement of minerals and their grains within the rocks, and then at the outcrop scale, um that is to say the meso scale, uh, they examine the relationship between the rocks and their structures such as folds, folds, you know. And then um, fold planes, you know, bedding planes, lineations, foliations, and many other things. But at the regional scale or macroscopic, that's um, where you're going to be looking at um, a larger scale. So you are looking generally at um, the distribution of rocks and their structures over a larger scale of, 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 of area, okay? Often using ge geological maps and remote sensing, I mean, um, um, to understand the general um, tectonic um, processes or tectonic deformation of a certain large area. Okay, so um, um, and then global structural geologists study the large scale patterns of uh, plate tectonics and the earth um, magnetic field. So um, the tools that you usually use, it's um, you can use the, the geological mapping you have to create what you call a geological map, you know. Um, so this a, a geological map, um, it will have a detailed rock formations and their structures. You're going to see the rock formations and their structures. Then with remote sensing, you're going to be using a satellite imagery um, and other remote sensing technologies to study the distribution of rocks and their structures. And then seismic um, data analysis, um, you um, usually analyze in seismic data to understand the internal structure of the earth. I mean, for example, if you send, um, let's say this is the ground and you um, put maybe a thumbprint track here, but you create um, um, some waves here, then waves are sent to the ground and then, you know, they're going to be back uh, on the surface of the earth uh, to what you call the geophones, all right? So um, how can you understand the internal structure of the earth? I mean, for example, this method, um, a seismic method is being used when um, people want to, you know, start uh, for the constructions. How? Um, you send the waves. You know, um, we learned this in high school that the solid for in the solid um get um, liquid solid gas 
So let's say this is liquid, this is solid, this is gas. Then and then um we know that in the um solid um your particles are closely packed. The particles are closely packed. And then if the particles are closely packed, it means when waves are passing through a solid um a rock, okay, a rock that is um it is stiff and it's not fractured, it's not faulted, all right, then it means that um the waves will travel very fast. But now if you um um the rock is faulted, fractured, and uh, um um, it's not stiff, it's not rigid, then the seismic velocity will now start to decrease. So that's how the geologist um, or geophysist understand um, or ge the, the structural geologist as well using um, complementing with this method as well. Um, you need to understand the internal structure. So if you see the, um, when you, uh, uh, you are um, um, on the surface of the earth and then you see that uh, the seismic velocity traveled very fast and then i can assume that the rock below the surface of the of the earth are rigid are stiff and they are not fractured and then i know that this side it can be good for a building um some you know um um, houses, malls, and many other things. And then computer simulations, you are using what you call computer uh, to model geological processes and predict future events. You, 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 for example, you can model um, a certain geological process like, let's say, my earthquakes, and now you start to predict when usually can, it, uh, the, or the likelihood of this earthquake uh, uh, happening, all right? And then a laboratory analysis, you are just analyzing the rock samples in the laboratory. Why? To, so that you can understand their mineral composition and their structure. All right. So uh, the... You can check over here. You can do laboratory um studies. You are in the lab. You know using some microscopes. Um, using some tools such as XRF, XRD, SAM, SIMS, and many other analytical equipments. You know to understand the rock textures, the mineral composition, mineral structures, and many other things. This will help a structural geologist to understand uh, the nature of the rocks and minerals in that particular area of investigation, and then you can also use um, uh, the remote sensing um, to understand um, a whole lot about the internal structure of the earth and then you can also use uh, what you call the computer simulation so the structural geologists they use all these tools um, and in combination and then you know seismic um, data can also be used and of course the geological mapping or the geological maps they can also be used to understand them um the structures them the fold elements and the, the the rocks and many other um features that can be seen all right so these tools they are very um important to the structural geologist so we are using these tools um um in terms of for data analysis um you have to analyze the seismic data or remote seismic to understand the distribution of the rocks and their structures. And then for the modeling, uh, where you are using computer simulations, you want to model the geological processes and predict the future events. I, I gave you example of the earthquake, and you can also talk about the, the volcanic er eruptions. Where would the volcano erupt and likelihood when? So you are predicting um, the future events. Then um, interpreting the geological map and other data sets to understand the relationship between rocks and their structures. I mean, we know geological maps, they would help you understand what's happening below the surface of the earth, right? Um, so when you're looking at the geological map, you're going to be understanding what's really happening um, um, about the rocks below the surface of the earth. And then, of course, field observation, you have to go to the field and, you know, check, um, um, looking at different skills. You can look at uh, micro skills, you know, but um, you can, but usually um, in the field, you can be able to see meso skills and, you know, of course, the, uh, the macro skills, right? 
And so you can well, um, be looking at the folds, you know, um, fold, um, bedding planes, foliations, and many other features. And then, then that in overall will give you um, um, an idea of um, the tectonic deformation that took place in that um, area of interest okay so structural geology is very important for um for example for resource exploration for the environmental sustainability for the natural hazard mitigation mitigations and climate change research all right uh, so so um when you want to explore the resources if you want to explore the resources you agree with me uh, that um you want to understand the distribution of um, of rocks and their structures all right and then and then um and then for you now to be able to find mineral resources and hydro and hydrocarbons all right so let's say um you um, find these um, uh, synclines and anticlines, and then you know these are usually associated with hydrocarbons. So if you find these, um, and then uh, you know that the likelihood is that um, the these hydrocarbons, all right. And then for environmental sustainability, understanding geological processes is important for managing natural resources sustainable and mitigating environmental impacts. I mean, for example, if you want to um, mitigate the environmental impact let's say for example you want to check the the um, mitigating what you call the landslide it means you have to check the the stability of the slope and many other things and then and then um, you can also be checking um, when will the earthquake uh, happen or the floods and many other things so that now you get to educate people around your area so that um, when that day arrives, people would have evacuated their places and they go to, they went to a safer place. All right. And so, and then also um, this, it, it will be very important for managing natural resources. I mean, if you understand um, the, um, the occurrence of the um if you understand the occurrence of groundwater okay if you understand the occurrence of groundwater then you tell people that you know what guys in our area um uh, we don't have sufficient amount of water of groundwater so, so it's it's a need that we must use water safely um because now every drop would be um would matter okay how 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 is that the case i mean for example if you use seismic method um if you use Six meg method, and you know you see that um, some of the rocks are most of the rocks below the surface of the earth are fractured. Then we know if we have fractured rocks, then the groundwater occurrence would would would, would be there, all right. But if we don't have many fractures, if we don't have many um um um, um faulted and fractured rocks, and then we know that the ground the likelihood of groundwater occurrence is it, it will be rare. Then you educate people that you know what, guys, please 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 don't waste water. Then climate change, understanding the geological process can help us understand how the earth climate has changed over time and, and how it may change in response to future changes in the um in the um sun's energy output so that's why the structural geology is uh, very important and you know i mean of course it's not only important for um all um things mentioned but you know as well um we we have um, a less of structural um, geology lecturers in South Africa, and hopefully, uh, I, I don't know about other countries, but uh, what I know is we don't have many structural geologists. So, um, if you're gonna be doing this course, you know, um, you um, the likelihood of getting a, of being employed if you wanna be academic, it's also you know um, um, good. If so, if you choose structural geology, you, these are highly um, possibility that you get employed and of course even the in the mining industry they need the experience of the structural geologist to understand um the fold you know the, to understand the, the the normal fold the reverse folds and many other things all right and to understand if um 
the reef is continuous or discontinuous all right so yeah so which is why structural geology is um a very a critical field that help understand how rocks have formed over time how they have been deformed by tectonic forces and how they interact with the environments so it is important for a um, um, field that has many practical applications in 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 areas such as resource uh, exploration um and then environmental sustainability you know natural hazard mitigations and climate change research all right um so thank you guys for joining us today into the introduction to structural geology um the next um, session um will be the um understanding now um the scales and that is to say micro scale meso scale and um uh, micro scale all right see you on the other side cheers <laughs>